we're actually in Brick Lane, also known as Broccoli Lane. My name is Adrian Boswell, collage artist, stroke the Broccoli Man. I've been doing this here for about 15 years now. I have up to 100,000 tourists here every weekend. And my first ever collage was just here called Broccoli Jungle. I used to put real broccoli out in the street, painted with gold paint. You used to go off to Tesco's, buy real broccoli. And as you can imagine, real broccoli stuck to the wall will eventually go off. It go rancid, poisonous and very smelly. So you won't want to eat the real broccoli off the wall. But this didn't stop guys coming out of the pub doing the broccoli challenge, which is eat the rancid poisonous broccoli off the wall. A few people ended up in hospital seriously ill. The NHS contacted the council and said, tell Mr. Broccoli Man, no more real broccoli. He's going to kill someone. So then I created the plaster of Paris broccoli. Then I put lots of this broccoli out all over London and became known as the Broccoli Man. And uh, three and a half years ago, some Chinese girls came in. They said, we lost our friends in Shoreditch and found them by following my lovely broccoli trail. So they said, we want to buy the street art. I said, no, street art not for sale. One of the girls started to cry. And I said, OK, come back next week. I'll put a bit of broccoli in a frame for you. So they came back the following week with another 20 girls from their university. I made them more broccoli. They took them back to China, put them on social media. Within one month, I was selling 100 broccolis every week all over the world. Then it was 200, then 300, then 400 every week. So then I became a slave to the broccoli. The broccoli was so successful because no one had actually seen a piece of broccoli in a frame before. And the only time they'd actually seen it was uh, buying it from one of the stores or having it on their plate for dinner. Never before, it's a bit like Andy Warhol pop art, but he didn't think of the broccoli. He thought about banana, Campbell's soup cans, Coke bottles, Marilyn Monroe, and he sensationalized an everyday product that people were used to using and seeing. So I've sensationalized the broccoli. Three and a half years on, I've moved into NFTs. It's another continuation of art. I'm getting a lot of negative response because people are saying, oh, you know, NFTs are not the same. You're, you've turned the back on being a real artist. But at the end of the day, NFTs are a continuation of art. You can't stop technology from progressing. You've already had Photoshop years ago that transformed art altogether and it made graphic designing a lot more available for everyone. So all these programs to deal with art is technology. NFTs are another step in technology that is just taking it forward even more. People are worried about the future, but they were saying all that about social media years ago. We are heading for a new world. It's an opportunity where other artists have gone into NFTs, had made substantial amount of money. Artists have been struggling for years and um, we've been selling our product really cheaply uh, just to make get, get by. But uh, why not an opportunity to make more money? Why shouldn't we? My collage work will be moving, like watching a fish fish in a fish tank, but it will be cuttings that are moving in, in a picture. I work solely in the subconscious mind, not the conscious mind. I put a bit there, a bit there, a bit there, a bit there and you can be there for hours and hours. The longer you're in that flow, the longer you go off like a meditation and you just fly away. When I come back again, I look at my own work and think, who the bloody hell did this? Because it's like you've gone away and you're letting the universe take over and this energy starts creating for you. You can use acrylic paint for the backgrounds. Uh, you use all types of paper. You recycle, you go to charity shops, car boot sales. So there's a big recycling process going on because I never know what anything's going to turn out like. This is why I don't do any commissions because when you're in that state of mind, you create for yourself first and others afterwards. And if you start doing commissions, you create these barriers. You wonder, oh, you worry, oh, is this person going to like that? Is this the, what they're asking for? When you remove all that and just solely create for yourself, the energy is totally different and you connect to more people because the energy is a little bit more relaxed and honest. If it's not sick, it's not art. But I also believe that 
There's no such thing as bad art. All art is good. Doesn't matter who creates it, all art is good because it's come from something deep in everyone. We're all capable of creating something, even if it's a scribble on a bit of paper, that is art.